Hi, I'm Hannah. I'm from Steubenville, Ohio, and I just celebrated eight years of recovery at the beginning of May. Um, so that's, a, that's pretty exciting for me. I am the director of nursing at a health department, so uh, you know that's a pretty big accomplishment for something that I've done in sobriety. Um, I'm a mother to two children, um, and yeah. Wow. Who I am. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we'll just get started right at the beginning. So let's talk about your childhood for a bit. In the very beginning, I had uh, all these feelings of insecurities, um, you know, not belonging, um, just things that sprung on me that I, I wouldn't expect normal seven year olds to think about, you know, not feeling like I fit in. Um, you know, comparing myself to other people that I didn't think anything of until, you know, until 10 years later, 20 years later when I'm getting into recovery and I start thinking about those childhood thoughts that I had as a kid, you know, um, of, of inadequacy. I had two older brothers um, and they drank, you know, but I always said, you know, like, that's not for me. Like, I can't believe it. I'd catch them smoking cigarettes. I was like, no way. That's so bad. <laughs> right. um, and then the first party I was at that it was offered to me, I was like, yeah, yeah, let me do that. Let me try that. Um, and it was it was off and running right there. Um, every weekend I was I was trying to party, you know, from the time I was in eighth grade, you know, through high school, getting kicked out of football games and dances and you know, started experimenting with things outside of alcohol really early. Okay. Okay. So, um, you, did you graduate high school? I did. Okay. Yeah. Did you, and what did you do after? High um, I, I ran, I, I, I went away to, I did go away to college. Um, but I went somewhere that I thought, uh, that nobody else from my, my hometown was going. Cause I thought, you know, Steubenville is my problem. I'm going to get out of here. Um, I'm going to go away where nobody else is going, um, and that will solve my problems. I'm going to get into a better group of friends. Um, I'm going to leave this small town, and I'm going to be a better person. Uh, so I, I move away, and um, I inevitably find the ta townies, you know, right. of, the, of, the, of the small town <laughs> that I go to, and, um, and that's in Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. Uh, so it's like a, a cute little hippie town. Um, there was all kinds of new things that I had never done there before. Um, and I, I skated by. I, I was. I wanted to stay well enough that my parents would continue to help me and enable me. Um, so I, I stayed in school. Um, I moved in with tons of different guys uh, so that I could, you know, stay there. And um, and then I once I graduated, um, I had nothing left there. I, I had nowhere to live, and my parents said, "Well, you're just going to have to come home at this point." Um, and that's when like things kind of started spiraling out of control worse. Um, cause I just felt, um, spiritually bankrupt at that point. I had nothing going for me. I, you know, I did graduate college, I, but I had a degree in public health that until the pandemic, I thought I would never use. <laughs> um, and, uh, I was living in my parents, you know, the, the bedroom I grew up in, um, just drinking in there by myself every day, doing other, other things alone. Um, and somebody else that I had known from years prior um, reached out to me and um, wanted to get dinner. Um, he had told me he just celebrated nine years sober. Um, and I was like, oh, wow, that's, you know, good for you. Um, <laughs> I don't care. Um, but, you know, uh, then I started seeing some sobriety culture and I was like, oh, my gosh, like there's a way to do things in life that you don't have to, uh, you know, be under the influence for. But, you know, uh, then I started seeing some sobriety culture and I was like, oh my gosh, like there's a way to do things in life that you don't have to, uh, you know, be under the influence for and, um, you know, attraction rather than promotion. It right. worked for me. Hmm. So you were kind of in that lifestyle of like you kind of grew up kind of doing that and you didn't really know how like to be sober is that right right like from what, right 14 yeah at least yeah and that's it um and you know for a lot of time I, I justified it because I thought everybody that I was surrounded with did that um so I really didn't even think it was a problem um until I got to that point where I felt like I was like running out of avenues I'd kind of exhausted these other options like yeah I made it through school but but now what now yeah. I have to go into the real world and I have nothing to do um and it wasn't until I, I started coming around that I saw characteristics in myself and what I was like looking for when I was out using that I realized, you know, 
my character traits were like really of that of an alcoholic. Wow. Your, your life is kind of already a mess and you go to dinner with this guy and what kind of sparks your interest? Did you get sober that day or? No, I, I, I remember very uh, distinctly having conversations with my friends and being like, well, he doesn't drink or, or smoke weed or anything. So like, you know, I'm not gonna not do that just cause he doesn't. Um, and it was actually like a very defining moment. I had been to a Pirates game um, while I was still using. Um, and I was supposed to give this presentation the next day and I got totally hammered at the game and didn't wake up, didn't make it. Um, and, and totally just, you know, had to make up all these lies and circle around and, and do that whole thing. Um, and I was like, man, this is terrible. Like, why do I keep doing this? Um, and then I got with this guy and we went to a Pirates game and I had all this anxiety about it. I was like, well, he doesn't drink. How am I going to go to a, a sporting event and not drink? I mean, who does that? Especially baseball. It's like the most boring sport ever. Um, and I go and I, and I didn't drink. And I was like, well, maybe there's something to this. Like, maybe you can have fun without, without drinking and getting blackout drunk every single time you go out. When I moved back home, I wasn't obviously able to join the, the real world of a workforce. So I was like, well, I'm just gonna continue going to college because I, like, I can get through that. Um, so that's when I, I enrolled in nursing school. I initially f failed out, but they uh, let me make the class up. I got back in. That's when I got sober. I ended up finishing nursing school. Um, in the meantime, I had worked at a hospital. I was like delivering babies. It was like the most wonderful job in the world. And in, in God's plan, you know, he, I, I left there and I didn't have a plan really. Um, so I took like a little part-time job at a women's health clinic and, and that was really fulfilling, like to kind of give back to a community of women that they don't have insurance, they don't have a lot of avenues of help. Um, so I was able to, to offer a lot there. Um, and while I was working there, I got a, a call, you know, randomly about a director of nursing um, job at our, at our local health department. And um, that was pretty big for me. I mean, I, it's kind of, it was kind of an important job to take on. And then uh, a year later, uh, COVID happened. So, <laughs> you that's know, a real big job, <laughs> right? <laughs> then it on. turned into a very big job. I thought I was going to have like a nine to five, uh, you know, desk job. Um, and during COVID, it was anything but that. Um, and you know, it, it's funny too. Like I said, at that five year mark, we were we were struggling, and that was right before COVID. And I had just started a ninety and ninety again because of everything that was happening. And I was like forty days in and uh everything was shut down they shut down meetings you know everything and um you know i was grateful at that point that i at least gotten that many in before things shut down and i had started taking sobriety seriously again because who knows what you know COVID was rough on the uh, recovery community yeah. i mean it's still it's still recovering from it i mean getting newcomers in the door is is hard it is. um so I'm just like, it, I just go back to that being, you know, my higher power is timing. Like I needed those meetings before everything shut down and before my workload like completely rampant out of Blue control. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you're right, like building that foundation. And that's why, that's why it's so important to build the foundation for things like that. Cause uh, for me, COVID, it was the hardest time in my sobriety for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Was... And that is, you know, in the beginning I would, I would question things like, well, why do I have to call every day? Like there's not, what am I going to say? Hey, what's up? But it's in those moments when things are going on that if that's your routine and that's what you're used to doing, then you're going to pick up and call someone, you know, you're not going to isolate and want to be away from everybody. You're going to do what you've been doing when things were good. Mm -hmm. So if you do what thing you know do things that you don't want to do when they're good, you're going to do them when they're bad, and that's when it's going to save your life.